What I want to do in this video is give a basic introduction to Newton's laws of motion. What are Newton's laws of motion, you might be asking yourself. Well, Newton's laws of motion are the fundamentals of classical physics. They are the laws that were written by Sir Isaac Newton in 1687. What do these laws have to do with anything, you might ask yourself. Well, they detail the relationship between motion and forces. The laws break down when we start to approach the speed of light, but hey, we will not go into that just yet. Whenever you hear someone say, the laws of physics, these are three of the laws that you will hear them talk about, or that they mean. Here are the three laws in brief. The first law is the law of inertia. The second, the law of acceleration. And the third, the law of action and reaction, which we'll go into further detail about. But for now, let's go into further detail on each one of the laws. We'll, first of all, explain the laws. What, the, what do they state exactly? Second of all, we'll use some diagrams, some illustrations, and some animations to show what the laws really mean. And third, we'll show some real world examples of the laws. How do these laws apply in real life? What does physics look like in the real world? What do Newton's laws look like in the real world? Let's go. Newton's first law, the law of inertia. Inertia is a term we'll go into further detail with and explain. What does this law state? Well, if there is no resultant force acting on the object, it will remain at rest. Excuse me. If it was previously at rest, or it will continue to move with a constant velocity. What is a constant velocity? Well, a constant velocity is uniform motion. That is motion in a straight line at a constant speed. Now, let's take this example, our first illustration. We see a pendulum bob and a helium balloon. Well, for the pendulum bob, it's much heavier than the helium balloon. However, both of them are at rest. But suddenly, a, law, uh, a force is applied and they accelerate. This is Newton's first law in action. So whenever you see something at rest, standing still, begin to accelerate. Just know that Newton's law, first law is in action. And next we have a soccer ball. The soccer ball is moving at a uniform velocity in a straight line. That is a constant velocity in a straight line. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the soccer ball example. Let's go into the math of the first law. For all forces acting on the body, F1, F2, F3, up to Fn, how many ever forces there are acting on this body, there is no resultant force if the summation of all forces equals zero. And when I say summation, I mean the vector summation of all forces equals zero. This simply means there is no resultant force acting on the body. All right, the first law tells us what a force is. What is a force? Just in case you missed it. A force is anything that causes acceleration. We'll go into this, we'll go into further detail in the second law. And it also tells us that all bodies, no matter how big or how small, have an inbuilt resistance to their change in motion or inertia. Remember inertia from earlier? Well, inertia is how difficult it is to get a body moving. It is related to momentum, which we'll cover as well in the second law. Let's take another, let's have a few more examples or animations to show Newton's first law. This man standing on the edge of a building, very dangerous. He throws the ball off. The ball falls down, but why does it fall? Wow, there's a force acting on it. What is that force? It is known as its weight. The weight is the mass times the acceleration due to gravity or g. You might have heard people say 5g, 6g, 7g. This is just 6 times the acceleration due to gravity. Alright, now let's have some more examples of Newton's first law. 
when you kick a soccer ball it stops moving because the resultant force is acting on it what is this resultant force well it's friction you didn't know that did you friction is moving as the ball moves friction acts on it this is why when you kick the soccer ball it almost starts slowing down immediately and it's slowing down means it's, there's a change in acceleration it is decelerating however if you had to kick that same soccer ball in space it would not stop and would move in a straight line this is because there's no resultant force on the ball in space there's no friction no resistance all right that's been the basic summary of, of the first law let's move on to the second the first law by the way lays the foundations for the next two laws newton's second law of motion what does this law state well it states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the magnitude of the resultant force and is in the direction of the force. What does this mean? Well, momentum is equal to the mass times velocity of a body. And what is momentum? Well, it's also it's like inertia. This is a measure of how hard an object is to stop once once it starts moving think about it a truck is very hard to stop while a balloon is very easy to stop that's because they'll have different momentums but if you accelerate the balloon to very very fast speeds it will be just as difficult to stop as the truck going at normal speeds let's do some math to explain this law brace yourself Turning the words into mathematical statements, we get that resultant force is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum. F is directly proportional to M. Theta, theta here simply means change, change in velocity over time. But the change in velocity is known as the acceleration. Well. Doing some more maths, we get that F is equal to Km by adding a constant of proportionality and changing the rate of change of velocity to acceleration, small letter a. K is a constant of proportionality. Well, the Newton is carefully defined. The Newton is a unit of force. It is defined as the resultant force needed to cause a rate of change of momentum of 1 kilogram meter per second. So, K will always equal to 1 when the Newton is defined like this. This law gives the relationship between mass and acceleration. Using this little illustration, we see that when a force is applied to a body, in this case a ball, it causes an acceleration in that same direction as the force that is applied. This is why we use arrows. The acceleration will never go against the resultant force. The force in this equation is the resultant force acting on the body. That is the equation F is equal to MA. It is not just any old force, but the resultant force acting on the body. Let's have some examples of Newton's second law. It is easier to push an empty shopping cart than it is to push a full one. Because this is because the full shopping cart has more mass than the empty one, hence it will be more difficult to accelerate. Remember this: the acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. This is why the shopping cart is hard to push. Newton's third law. Ah, if you've ever tried pushing someone while on roller skates, you've experienced this law. Let's go into what it states. If a body A exerts a force on body B, then body B exerts an equal but opposite force on A. Let's use some other simpler words to get the message across. For every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. But reaction, action, they don't make sense. So, for every action force, there is an equal but opposite reaction force. Opposite in this context means in an opposite direction. If the action force is to the left, the reaction force will be to the right. As the arrows show right over here. Some clarification. The forces do not cancel each other out. 
This is because they act on different bodies. Newton's third law tells us that forces come in pairs. To help you identify these pairs whenever you're doing a free body diagram, let's, let's go through some litmus tests for the laws. Do they have the same magnitude? Do they act along the same line but in opposite directions? Do they act at the same time? Do they act on different bodies? This is fundamental to Newton's third law pairs. They act on different bodies, but along the same line. Are they the same type of force? That is, are they gravitational forces, electromagnetic forces, weak nuclear forces or strong nuclear forces? A gravitational force will never be paired with a, will never be Newtonian paired with a strong Newton, nuclear force. Both the pair of forces are the same type. They're both gravitational, both electromagnetic, both weak nuclear, or both strong nuclear. And just in case you're wondering, those are the four fundamental forces. Examples of Newton's third laws. If you stand on the earth, as you're doing, when you walk or jump or whatever, you push down on the earth and the earth pushes onto you, pushes up onto you. You'll never notice it because the earth is so massive, but yes. Imagine you're on a trampoline, the same thing still applies. When you push down, the trampoline pushes up on 